Hi everyone, hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to our channel. In this video, I'm going to showcase how you can access Microsoft Azure REST APIs with the help of OAuth 2.0 Client Credential Flow. And in this video, I'm going to use PowerShell to access the Azure resources. Now, in the last video, we have discussed how to use Postman with Client Credential Flow, whereas in this video, I'm going to write a script from scratch, and I'll tell you the methods to replace a specific section called URL, wherein you will be giving the endpoints of the resource that you're trying to access. And then this can help you to access multiple resource from the same script itself. Now, since this is the first video uh, related to PowerShell for Azure REST API, so I'm just going to show you how you should access a specific resource. But as we move on, we'll cover multiple use cases, likewise managing VMs or managing log analytics workspace or managing Sentinel or different services. Okay, so this will be a complete demo video, no more deck. So what I'll do is I'll switch to my machine where I've signed into portal.azure.com. Now, when it comes to PowerShell, the very first thing that should be sorted is which endpoint I should reach to initiate authentication, right? So in my last two videos, I was very specific that we are going to use these two endpoints. So this is the authorized endpoint and this is the token endpoint. Now, when it comes to client credential flow, this is the endpoint that we have to reach. But I have explained this before, but just a quick recap. This is the link which can be accessed to know all the endpoints that can practically exist for a specific tenant. You can see and it's not only about endpoints you'll also come to know about what are the scopes uh, which are supported and there are multiple other different categories as well which is available in this particular link okay which is this one so what we'll do is we'll access this link itself okay because as we move along with the playlist i'm going to use uh, this link for multiple methods or let's say multiple details are there which i will be querying so i'm going to use this first link just to save this in a variable and then get to token endpoint okay so since this is open id i'm going to name it as open id itself and then i'm going to say invoke rest method and then go to this particular uri and which URI is that? The one that we have just copied. Okay. So let me expand this slightly. Yeah. So this is the first command. So I'm going to run this. And now if I go and open this particular variable or access this variable, I'll see all the endpoints will exist here. You can see. Now it is slightly more sorted as compared to what we were seeing on the browser, right? So we can see token endpoint and then the methods which are supported, what are claims supported. I mean, this is slightly more descriptive to what you were seeing on the browser, okay? Now from this, we need token endpoint, okay? So what we'll do is from this particular outcome that we are getting, which is open ID, I have to select token endpoint, which is this one. So I'm going to save this value again to a different variable and I'm going to name it as token. Okay. So now let's run these two command and see what exactly we have in token. And this is my token endpoint. This is the same information which was available on the browser but if you will see i am getting this v2 which we don't need which means what while we have copied this address we have selected the option of v2.0 because for now this is the only option which is available okay so if i come back here and if i try to search for metadata document uh, for let's say v1 i can't find it so in this case, the process is exceptionally simple. You have to just delete this. That's it. Now, once you again initiate these two commands, and now if you try to access token, 
you can see I'm getting the one token endpoint, which is this one. Now the next thing is moreover related to the set of parameters that we have to send in body. Okay. So for that, I have already created a sample, which I'll just paste here and I'll explain you what exactly is happening under the hood. Okay. So the first section here says, I'm going to incorporate the client ID, then client secret, then redirect URI is something that you have to use in terms of sending the callback URL, which is HTTPS localhost. Then my grant type is client credential. So if I'll come back to Postman, you will see grant type. And here also it is client credential. Now this resource that you see over here is something that we were sending in the body, right? So if I'll scroll down this, you can see token request resource, a specific value, and then it has to be sent in request body. That's exactly what I have done here. Okay. And then in the tenant, I am naming concepts work. Now, see, this is something uh, which if you want, you can include or if you want, you can ignore this value as well. That's not going to make any difference. Okay. Now, the next step is to go ahead and initiate an authentication. Right. That means by capturing all these details, I should go to token endpoint, which is this one uh, that we see over here. And then I should get a token, right? So let's see what's happening. Okay, so let me just replace this with token endpoint. Okay. I'm going to invoke a request through my URL, which is this one. I mean, the one that we see over here. And then I'm going to send this body in the form of uh, a variable or let's say a request variable in this request itself. And the method that I'm using is post because this is how the client credential flow works. Now, if I run this script, the expected behavior is I should get the token that I can use with this script to query multiple resources. Now, what you can see that I'm getting an error where it says the application with this identifier was not found. That means what? Even though I'm sharing this script, what you have to do is you have to update client ID and client secret. So let me just do this quickly. I'm keeping all these mistakes as well in the video so that, you know, you should understand that if anything goes wrong, how you should relate. Okay. These are all intentional mistakes. I suppose you'll agree with me. Okay. So now I'm going to clear the screen. And that's it. I have the access token now. Now, this is the token that I have to incorporate while sending the request. Okay. So now let's do something. Let's copy the first URL that we have to access. Okay. Which was my subscription URL, right? Which is management.azure.com subscriptions and then the specific API version. Now in the next line, what I'm going to do is I'm going to query subscriptions, right? So for that, in the subscription variable, go ahead and save the response that you're getting from here. Now, let me just show you what exactly is happening over here. I'm again initiating a REST method or a REST request to this particular URL, which is this one. And in the headers, I'm including bearer and my access token now if i come back to my postman see this is exactly what was happening over here as well there is a value which is token and then the header prefix is bearer so i'll come back to my script now the expected behavior is the moment i'll run this there must be some response that i should get in this particular variable and let's see if we get any response okay Perfect. So I think the response is completed. So now if I go ahead and say uh, subscription, I'm getting some response. So now if I select the value part, as you can see, now I am getting uh, a specific subscription where my client ID has access. Now, if you remember, I was talking about 
having or granting permission for a client ID to a specific location altogether, which means what? For this particular subscription, there is a very dedicated resource that I can access. If you guys remember last time, in the last video itself, I have granted this client ID the permission to access a specific resource altogether. That's why it is showing me only one subscription, which is Visual Studio. Okay. Now let's say I want to manage multiple subscriptions from the same client. Okay. Which is CW hyphen Azure API hyphen rest. So I'll go to my subscription. And for this subscription, it is already having uh, the respective access. So I'll go to other subscription now. And this time I'll click here and I'll click on add. And then I'll add a role assignment. And this time the privileged access, let's say for contributor privilege for this particular application, which is CW hyphen cw hyphen azure api hyphen rest okay and i'll click on review and assign so now the expected behavior is if i'll refresh the token again and again go to this particular section or go to this particular url now i should get two subscriptions listed let's see what is the expected result that we are getting okay so again, I'll go ahead and type subscription. And if this time I'll go ahead and see value, I am getting two entries. Okay. So the concept of access control remains same. Now for this second subscription, Visual Studio subscription, this second one, I have granted contributor privilege at the subscription level itself. Okay. Which means what? If I customize this, I can actually go ahead and query any information. Okay. So let's say if I copy my subscription ID from here. Okay. And then go to resource group URL. Okay. The expected behavior is all the resource group should get listed. Okay sorry it's resource groups let's see what happens this time i've changed this okay perfect now let's see what we are getting in subscription just give me one minute value perfect you can see i'm getting all the resource group now okay Similarly, I can go ahead and change this to any other resource, right? So let's say I go back to my subscription. I click on, let's say all resource. And here, if I apply a filter that show me all the resource that exists in this particular subscription, I can practically choose any of these resource and access them from my powershell script itself so let's say i want to query this dcr for linux okay i just want to see uh, some of the configuration which is related to this particular dcr itself i'm going to copy this value i'll come back to my notepad and i'm going to follow the same process which i was showing you before in the notepad let me open that to recall what i was explaining this is something that I've explained in my last video. So this is what we need added with management.azure.com. I will delete this last section and now I need API version. Now see, since we are talking about one specific resource, which is DCR, which is data collection rule, it's my recommendation to always match this API version, right? So in this case, it has to be 2022-06. Okay. I assume I've added the right value. Yes. So now I'll go ahead and copy this URL, come back to my script, 
and just replace this value and let me delete this line as well and delete perfect now i'm going to initiate my script again and let's see what we get the expected behavior is i should get dcr as an object in my value okay perfect you can see i'm getting one single value for dcr now since it was only one uh, value that's why it is directly available in this variable itself i mean these are all powershell tips and tricks i'm sure you guys know much more than me i'm not a very good at uh, you know scripting but i'm just telling you different methods of accessing the same set of information okay so this was all about knowing how you can access Azure resources through PowerShell by using client credential flow. The concepts remain same. You need an Azure AD application. Whichever application you have created, you have to make sure that particular application has the right set of permissions. So in our case, the application was this one and we have already consented the application to access Azure resources by selecting this particular option of user impersonation. Moreover, this, the application that we have created, which is this one, has the permissions assigned for both the subscriptions. Okay. So let's talk about a quick summary of what all we have discussed in this video. We have discussed about accessing Azure REST API from PowerShell. We have created a script from scratch. Now this script will be available on our LinkedIn page because YouTube does not allow to post documents. Now we have also seen how we can up update the URL part to access multiple resources. In the next video, I'm going to create a use case specific script to access multiple resources. As we move along with this playlist, I'm going to give you multiple scripts for automation and uh, which you can use to perform a specific task which is required on a daily basis okay so if you think that this channel is helping you to learn anything new please feel free to subscribe and share this video with your technical community thank you so much thanks for your time